The next controversy you brought up, and it says retreatment rates depict a false narrative of PA utility. We touched on this a little bit, but I want to take it a little bit further uh, and, and just have you kind of run through this one. Yeah. So I think, you know, the the big uh, knock against prostate embolization is that uh, when urologists look at the the data from, especially from some uh, the RCTs that were published out of the, you know, the Swedish trial and others, you know, there was a 20% retreatment rate at one year. And then they're like, well, it, do, it doesn't work in, in a large number of patients. And then, you know, looking more globally at the long-term data uh, that we talked about earlier in the podcast, you know, at five to 10 years, there's probably also a 20% retreatment rate. And so, you know, what, what are these retreatment rates? So I think the the early failures are really contingent upon technique. You know, how are you doing it? Are you identifying all the vessels? Are you treating both sides of the gland? Um, the, those early papers, those big RCTs, the, the app trial and such, you know, a large number of patients um, were only treated with unilateral embolization, hence why they have recurrence of symptoms very, right. very early. It makes sense. You treat it on one side, we know that that's not going to work. Same thing with the UK rope trial. And so when urologists bring up those issues, that's like basically the argument can be made that's like doing half a tur or yeah. half a resume or aqua ablation. Of course, it's not going to work. The long-term retreatment rates are really speak to the natural history of the disease. And so, you know, I don't think it's possible to get a retreatment rate that's zero. And when you compare PAE to other minimally invasive surgical therapies, and there are a lot of nice uh, systemic meta-analyses that are both from the PAE literature and also the MIST literature, they all really show that the long-term retreatment rates for both therapies, uh, both groups of therapies rather, are in the 10 to 30% range at five to 10 years. So it lines up pretty nicely. PAE has a retreatment rate of that. So do all the other MISTs. It's, it's really consistent. And so if you see that, so then if we have this similar retreatment rate and we know what the natural history of the disease is, why wouldn't you want to choose something that is less invasive, has a better safety and side effect profile, and you know won't affect sexual function rather than something that's more invasive? And so I think that's a, a better option for patients. And if you were to counsel them appropriately and kind of present everything like this, I would argue that you know a patient would rather undergo um, something like a PAE and preserve his sexual function early on and then progress if he needs to, to something more invasive later on in life, or, you know, have a repeat PAE if he needs to, rather than move forward to something more invasive surgically. 